Space farms, spider farms, and fish farms. There are many different types of farms in the world that you probably didn't know existed. So join me as we take a look at 15 unusual types of farms. Number 15, Ocean Farm 1. The world's population isn't getting any smaller, and sometimes it can feel like there are more people than the planet can handle. And while food supplies may not exactly be limited, world hunger persists. By 2030, the world needs to be able to produce 70% more food than what we're working with now, using fewer resources and leaving behind a minimal footprint. So that's where Ocean Farm 1 comes in. Despite covering two-thirds of the world's surface, only about 2% of our food consumption comes from the ocean. So Ocean Farm 1 aims to fix that problem. This massive 223-foot-tall, 360-foot-diameter facility is the world's first offshore fish farm looking for a long-term solution to the exploitative world of your typical fish farm. It can operate all on its own, without the use of any external fishing vessels. It's built to operate for a full 25 years and is able to withstand typhoons and earthquakes, all while producing 1.5 million fish per year. But just like a typical fishing vessel, won't Ocean Farm 1 pick up all sorts of trash that float through the ocean? Nope, because the facility is surrounded by a netting that keeps anything that could harm the fish inside away. Ocean Farm 1 is an amazing facility that will hopefully keep humankind fed for the rest of our days. Number 14, Leech Farm. All right, the next entry on our list may not be for the faint of heart, so if you're squeamish like me, make sure to cover your eyes. But leave a little space between your fingers because this one's a crazy one. Leech farms. It may be an outdated medical practice, but leeching was used for centuries by cultures all around the world. Feeling sick? Throw a leech on it. Your leg is bothering you? Let one of these bloodsuckers take the pain away. And even though they may not be an over-the-counter remedy right now, the leech industry is still slithering 60,000 of these creepy crawlers through the modern hospitals in Europe every year. So where do you think they all come from? Well, leech farmers collect the specimens from waterways and other natural habitats and bring them to these wet farms where they can breed and be studied. But seeing as how they need blood to survive, how are they all kept so healthy and happy? Well, the farmers fill sausage casings with sheep blood and let them go to town just once every six months. So when the leeches grow into big and fat adults, they're shipped off to the hospitals. The job may suck, but someone has to do it. Number 13, California's Carnivorous Ranch. All right, don't be scared by the name, because although California carnivores sounds like a farm for lions, tigers, and bears, oh my, it's actually a farm for plants. Flesh-eating plants, that is. Located in Forestville, California, California Carnivores is home to more than 500 varieties of meat-eating plants, like the well-known Venus flytraps and Australian pitcher plants to the lesser-known Cape Sundews and tropical butterworts. If it eats, they've got it. The farm has been operating since 1989, and they even encourage guests to bring their own snacks. For the plants, that is. That's right, if you come into California carnivores, feel free to bring a bag of flies, crickets, or anything you don't want to find in the house, and feel free to let the plants feast on their flesh. And while all of these plants really just rely on water, sunlight, and good soil to survive, they have no problem eating any unsuspecting fly that they may attract. Sometimes the farmers often come to work only to find larger creatures like frogs within the maws of their carnivorous crop. Number 12, Spider Goat Farms. Okay, you've heard of Spider-Man, but what about spider goats? Spider goats are very real and a new addition to the world of living oddities created by science. But instead of swinging from building to building and saving the city once a week, all these goats do is produce milk that contains spider silk. Hey, that rhymes. But because these goats have had their DNA spliced with the golden orb spider, the silk from the milk can be extracted and used to make all kinds of amazingly strong materials, like parachutes, fishing lines, and even body armor. These spider goats are totally amazing and seriously unusual, but don't expect to find silk milk on the shelves of your local grocery store anytime soon, because they're strictly bred and farmed for science. And if you don't believe me, just reach out to the University of Utah, and they'd be happy to show off these amazing spider goats on one of their many guided tours. And just always remember that with great power comes great responsibility, even for goats. Number 11, Hot Pepper Farm. All right, the next entry on this list is one hot farm, literally. 
Ed Curie is a proud farmer living and working on his crop in South Carolina and specializes in hot peppers. And we're not just talking about your average jalapenos and habaneros here, although I'm sure Curie can help you find some of those. But this farm's biggest cash crop is their Carolina Reaper. It's not only the hottest pepper on the farm, but it's also the hottest pepper in the world, capable of bringing down even the toughest of heat lovers. Curie was able to grow these by crossing a Pakistani Naga pepper with a red habanero, creating this nasty little pepper that produces just over 2 million Scoville units. And just to put that into perspective, the typical jalapeno that you find in your lunch has just 5,000 Scoville units. In fact, Curie's Carolina Reaper has more in common with pepper spray. This is the type of fire that the fire department can't help you with. But Curie's farm is famous for another reason, too, because in 2018 he held a pepper eating contest with his Carolina Reaper being the final challenge. Number 10. Moose Farm Name some of the most popular kinds of milk, cow, goat, almond, and oat. But there are people out there that are drinking moose milk. It may be a little hard to come by, but there's a moose farm in Russia, the Ivan Susanin Sanatorium dedicated to the stuff. And believe it or not, moose milk is incredibly strong stuff, packing more amino acids and all-around good stuff for our bodies than everyday cow milk does. But it's got double the fat content and even a slight pine scent, which is probably why you won't find it in the dairy section. Having a moose farm and harnessing their milk isn't easy, because they're much heavier and much less docile than a cow. But the farmers are more than up to the task. Unlike most dairy farms, you won't find a mass of moose piled on top of one another and lining up to be milked. The moose at Ivan Susanen roams around the local forests and comes to the farm to give birth. It's actually pretty cool. And what else does a mother produce when she's pregnant? Eh, that's right, moose milk. The farm claims that the milk has all sorts of health benefits and can cure a wide range of illnesses. But the only catch here is the moose only gives birth, therefore producing milk just once a year. So the farm makes most of its money not from selling the moose milk, but from tourists. Number 9. The Pope's Farm The Pope may command a flock of 7 million followers, but he also commands a different type of flock on his farm. That's right, most people don't know, but a huge estate known as the Castel Gandolfo was purchased in the 16th century as the Pope's summer getaway. But this home also features 62 acres of farmland and crops all owned exclusively by the Vatican until Pope Francis took the reins. Instead of taking this place as his summer abode like so many of his predecessors, he decided to open the place up to tourists. That doesn't mean that the giant farm is going anywhere. The estate can be reached by a train that runs from Vatican City, and anyone who wants to buy some holy produce is more than welcome to. But don't forget about those chickens. While you can't take one home, they've all become one with the Holy Spirit because they're all fed of the leftover dough from the communion wafers made at the Castel Gandolfo by the nuns. But then again, maybe these holy chickens offer a tastier alternative to the communion wafer. Number 8. Bird's Nest Farms Having a farm dedicated to gene-splicing goats and dangerously hot peppers is one thing, but having a farm dedicated to bird's nests is a totally different thing. Bird's nest soup is an incredibly popular delicacy in certain parts of Asia, but actually getting the nests themselves can be tough. Instead of hitting one of the morning markets for ingredients, you can expect a restaurant owner to go around looking for nests to knock off. So that's why in Indonesia, locals have put together swiftlet bird farms in the crevices of multi-story buildings. It may sound like a crazy idea, but you'll be wishing you invested in this business a lot earlier because diners are more than happy to pay $100 for a bowl of the bird's nest soup. So what these farmers do is carve entrance holes into the rafters, nooks, and crannies of these buildings, anywhere a bird would want to nest and start a family, and then pepper the area with specific scents, insects, and even swift-lit bird recordings to attract new avian residents. Now you've got a bird farm. It may seem like an odd farm to many Westerners, but before these makeshift farms were crafted, there was a serious over-harvesting problem in the area. This farm is definitely for the birds. Number 7. Snake Farm Why did it have to be snakes? If you fancy yourself an ophidiophilia or lover of snakes, then you must check out the Queen Saoba Memorial Institute, a snake farm in Bangkok, Thailand. While they're not farming these snakes like they are goats and moose for their milk, these snakes are milked for their venom. 
The Institute is one of the biggest venom extraction sites in the world, which they then use to produce cures and anti-venoms for some seriously mean bites. If you live in the city, it may sound like a crazy notion, but people are still getting bit by snakes all over the world, with many of these bites being as painful as they are fatal. This institute houses literally thousands of venomous snakes, and the researchers here milk them for venom by hand, forcing them to bite into jars and let their poison drip down. But despite their deadly attributes, most of the snakes here are pretty docile, because they're well-fed and kept in the proper warm environment. And for a small fee, visitors can watch the snakes be milked, but this is one process that requires a seriously steady hand. Number 6. La Caverne Back in the 1960s and 70s, the city of Paris built a whole slew of car parks. But as time went on and car ownership began to decline, so did the need for these underground spaces. So what can you do other than let them sit there and accumulate fungus? Well, that was the perfect idea for the French startup Cycloponics. There are about 1,500 acres worth of space amongst these underground car parks, and so Cycloponics has been hard at work to create and cultivate organic mushroom farms down in the dank concrete depths. The startup produces food for local distribution without leaving behind a carbon footprint, and they've aptly named the operation La Caverne. And while it may sound kind of gross, mushrooms need damp environments to thrive, and many of them help in the decomposition process of other organic materials. So I guess they're all kind of gross in their own way. But much to the dismay of the Parisians above, their city has been growing mushrooms in places like this since the 1800s, until the city built the metro. But the last one only closed about 50 years ago. At the end of the day, Cycloponics is doing some really good work down there. So who knew an entire ecosystem was growing right below your feet? Number 5. Black Ivory Coffee Farm Coffee is an essential part of people's mornings everywhere, but very few of them think about how it gets from the farm to their coffee pot. And there's one brand in particular, Black Ivory, that will really raise some eyebrows. Black Ivory coffee beans hail from Thailand, specifically a farm inhabited by elephants. So why elephants? Well, elephant poop is actually the coffee's secret ingredient. They don't just graze and poop, fertilizing the area normally. Instead, the black ivory farmers will collect the beans, and instead of cleaning them more traditionally, they feed them to the elephants, letting the beans pass through the stomachs and intestines of the elephants, and then exit through their rear the old-fashioned way. The poop beans are cleaned, peeled, and then sold for $500 a pound. Yet, black ivory coffee is the most expensive in the world, and despite the odd process, it's completely devoid of the usual bitterness we're all used to. And for every 30 kilograms of beans these animals eat, they send just one kilogram back. Talk about black gold. Number 4. Armstrong's Cricket Farm You'll be hearing crickets for this next entry on our list, not because it's boring, but because it's an actual cricket farm. Armstrong's Cricket Farm in Georgia is one of the most unique, if not loudest, farms in the world, and they've been raising these little critters for decades. The place is absolutely packed with millions upon millions of crickets all nestled in their little cricket boxes, and they make for some of the best fishing bait you'll find. And of course, the occasional live feed to be sold at pet stores. And seeing as how Armstrong's Cricket Farm is in the business of producing some low-on-the-food-chain crop, they even sell worms too. And while the farm does do pretty well, they're open for visitors and offer guided tours through the rows upon rows of bugs. Loud bugs. Number 3. World's Biggest Dairy Farm Okay, so we've seen some pretty unusual types of farms so far, but the Mudanjiang Mega Farm is on a whole other level. It's even got the word mega in it for crying out loud. Well, that's because it has an area of 22 and a half million acres, making it the largest farm in the world. Just to put that into perspective, the second largest farm in the world is just 11 million acres. It screams competition, which is fitting seeing as how it's a dairy farm. But the Mudanjiang Mega Farm is young, having only been built in 2015, when the EU placed a ban on Russian dairy products, and China was happy to step in. To fill that dairy void, they brought in 100,000 cows to produce 800 million liters of milk a year. But where does one get that many cows? Well, all of the animals were brought in from Australia, New Zealand, and Uruguay. And when you have that many cows, there's no way they're going to be grazing freely, especially because free land in China is incredibly limited. 
So mega dairy farmers look to the American farming model, keeping the cow's belly full of grain and fodder within the walls of the farm, and using special breeding techniques to increase each cow's yield by 30%. And sure, the place is ventilated, but you can only imagine what it smells like in there. Number 2. Space Farms Space, the final frontier, not just for humans, but for plants as well. It makes sense considering we're looking to the stars more and more lately, with billionaires racing one another to see who can colonize new planets first. And the colonists are gonna have to eat. Astronauts and scientists have been growing plants and vegetables out in space for some time now, but it wasn't until 2015 that they started to actually eat them. NASA has developed a vegetable production system simply called Veggie on board the International Space Station, with their first ready-to-eat crop being red romaine lettuce. It may be a simple crop, but because good soil, water, and especially sunlight are incredibly hard to come by in space, this was a majestic feat unto itself. Veggie uses LED lights, which are heat-free light sources for the plants, and can be turned to different wavelengths depending on what the crop needs. But with the onset of red romaine, Veggie has also produced cabbage, kale, mustard, and bok choy on the ISS. You know, all the things your mom made you eat back down on Earth. It may not be the tastiest food in the world but it may be the tastiest food in space. Number 1. Nemo's Garden Italy has got some great agriculture, producing obvious things like olive oil, tomatoes, and of course, wine. But when you dive beneath the surface, you'll find an interesting type of farm you wouldn't have known about otherwise. Enter Nemo's Garden. Just off the coast of Genova, there's a farm in full effect, 20 feet underwater. Much like a greenhouse, these bulbous glass pods are full of plant life. But unlike a greenhouse, these pods don't use LED lights or hydroponic tools. Instead, they use the static temperature of the seawater and the red spectrum of sunlight you'll find underwater to keep things growing. Nemo's Garden is still in its early phase, so don't expect to be eating salad in an underwater restaurant anytime soon. But the pods still sustain life and the research is being done day and night to see how we can make this a sustainable reality. It's quite possible that Nemo's garden can give way to even more of these underwater farms to develop more pharmaceuticals and feed the starving masses. But until then, we're just going to have to keep floating on. Watch our future playlist for more top 15 videos about the future. Sit back, relax, and binge watch all of our best future-related videos.